Hey everybody, what's up from Pokemon Classics, reminding you that the classics never go out of style. There is no doubt that the Pokemon market is changing. Over the last few years, we've experienced incredible volatility, but recently I've seen some data points and some analytics that have me hopeful, or at least optimistic about the future stability of this market. Now that's what the video is all about today, is a taking a deep dive into some of those market analytic tools, as well as some interesting data points to decipher some trends and maybe make some commentary and speculations about what the future might hold for Pokemon collecting. Now, if you guys have never explored this website before, I recently discovered it, but TCG Fish is an amazing place to look through charts, graphs, and other data points that are organized in a very user-friendly manner. And so that's what we'll be referencing today. If you guys wanna check it out for yourself, I'll leave a link for it down in the description below, but I really enjoyed using that as a resource. Anyway, today I wanna to take a look specifically at three interesting trends, along with some of my commentary and speculations on them. The first is that there may be some emerging evidence of market stability starting to arise after a significant growth cycle and then subsequent correction. In addition to that, I think there's some interesting data about the market share or the market volume of graded cards being sold when broken down by each individual grading company. Lastly, one of the things we haven't really seen in the past is a sales inversion between Japanese and English cards, which is actually pretty interesting and I think signals a return to fundamentals, or at least that's my conclusion. Anyway guys, roll up your sleeves because we're gonna be dealing with a lot of numbers, a lot of data today, and if that's your thing, you're gonna like this video. Let's jump into it. First, let's address the current state of the market holistically as we take a look at the overall trajectory of sales. Now you guys certainly don't need me to explain the 2020 to 2021 boom where we saw an increase in prices, sales volume, interest, popularity of Pokemon cards across the board. And I think this graph is clearly representing that as we see the massive spike coming into that time period. However, just as quickly we saw the subsequent correction in the market and now we're beginning to see those drops flatlining or at least the rate of change stabilizing out. And to me, I think this data may be signaling a potential bottom in a lot of the price drops. Now it is true that this graph is merely representing the average sale price per item. And it's not necessarily representative of the market as, as a whole or in its entirety. But if we look at the master set values also available here on TCG Fish, we see the same sort of stabilization in the rate of change for a lot of these sets. And their prices for PSA 10 cards, PSA 9 cards, or even PSA 8 cards. You know, we could look at first edition base set as representative of English. Even Japanese Fossil seems to be stabilizing, or an e-reader series set like Aquapolis, most of them are showing at least a slower rate of change, and in some cases, some of them are actually creeping upwards once more. So are we nearing the bottom? Perhaps, it's really difficult to say because there certainly is more room for it to drop. A lot of these cards are still well above their 2019 valuations. And the macroeconomic situation here in the United States and globally is not particularly good, but I do think we may be through the peak saturation for graded cards with all of those backlogs coming back and hitting the market, as well as modern printing more cards than ever before. Maybe we're getting through that and we're starting to normalize here. It's true that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And I do think we've seen these types of market trends and cycles in the past. At least as it applies to Pokemon, we've seen this cycle play out numerous times in the past, generally in three phases. Where in the first phase, there's some stable, steady growth over a longer period of time, some sort of catalyst immediately following, raising the hype and interest in prices, then the subsequent correction as markets reevaluate the fundamentals and reprice those cards. Then once again, the cycle repeats. So could we be getting ready to return back to the stable, steady growth we've seen in the past? I think it's entirely possible. In fact, if we return to that chart from earlier, I would label it in this way. Perhaps that consolidation phase was in 2019 to early 2020, when collection pieces were still being bought on the down low, but then with the explosion of popularity with the 25th anniversary, the pandemic lockdowns, the stimulus money, the influencers, Pokemon was everywhere, and that led to unprecedented saturation. People putting up cards by the millions for sale, sent to grading companies and unprecedented levels causing grading companies to shut down, new collections being unearthed from people's attics and their basements. Just Pokemon cards were everywhere. And through that saturation, well, now there's the devaluation as people are looking to liquidate those collections and those pieces 
all selling at the same time. Inevitably though, those pieces, or at least the ones that are valuable, will be bought up and added to collections, either by large collectors, private collectors, companies, resellers. There is a bottom floor to a lot of those pieces. And once they fall so far, then that consolidation phase will begin again. And then perhaps it'll be a return back to some slow, steady growth for the items that truly have the fundamentals on their side. That's just my speculation, but that is one observation that I wanted to make and share with you all today. Next, let's talk about grading companies. Now the chart currently on the screen represents sales volume by individual grading company. Lining up PSA, CGC, and BGS, we see one clear winner in this mix, and it shouldn't be a surprise, but PSA is currently reigning supreme. The part that I find fascinating by this though is going from July to September, which this chart represents, PSA has almost doubled its sales volume over that period of time. Now we could pull up another chart to look into a little more depth, but in just one month's time, PSA has gained 3.1% of the market share, while CGC has lost 1.21%. If we unfold an expanded chart of this and go back to July, we'll actually see that PSA has gained 8.45% of market share, while CGC has lost 7.87%. That's over a 15% difference in just a couple of months, which is actually pretty significant. Now, this could be attributable to a number of different reasons. Perhaps more PSA cards are hitting the market due to their backlog and their close down and a lot of those cards getting back to people. But I think it does signal that PSA grading is becoming more accessible and the more accessible those graded cards are, the more they're going to sell and the more market share PSA is going to retain over its competitors. Now, I do need to acknowledge my own bias here as something of a PSA purist myself when it comes to card grading, but I do think the vast majority of collectors out there prefer PSA as a grading company, that their only real limitation has been their own self-imposed obstacles over the last few years. In fact, if we go back to April of 2021, almost a year and a half ago, PSA closed its services to almost everyone, with the exception of the most expensive services, which all but made it inaccessible to collectors across the world. However, those blocks are now being removed. In July of 2022, PSA returned with an $18 submission special for collectors, and now in October of 2022, they've had another special at $15 and the return of the $18 bulk rate to everyone. So as PSA has become more accessible, I think that's a large reason why we're seeing their market share and their sales volume increasing, and that might further stabilize now that there's a competitive playing field for all the grading companies. Without PSA being locked down and being on equal footing to BGS, CGC, and a number of other grading companies out there, we'll get a better indication of what is the preferred grading. And I think personally that PSA is going to win that battle. Now, more importantly, there were a number of smaller companies that emerged to help fill that void in PSA's absence. Whether or not those companies survive the next couple years, I'm not really sure. I do speculate though that we will see significant reduction in the number of grading companies that are out there. And the ones that are still existing will probably have significantly more competition to win over business from the general public once we've left this mania phase. So I think it's entirely possible and perhaps even likely that we see more competitive prices for bulk grading coming out in the immediate future. At least I hope so. I think that's good for the consumer, but you guys will have to let me know what you think down in the comments below. The last trend that I wanted to discuss is one that's admittedly a bit out of my area of expertise, and that's the recent sales inversion with Japanese cards outperforming their English counterparts, at least in terms of average sale price per item. Now, historically, traditionally, English cards tend to yield higher prices than their Japanese counterparts, with some obvious exceptions. I mean, obviously you have trophy cards in Japanese and various Japanese exclusives that do much better than any of their English counterparts, but typically, English has always outperformed Japanese. However, this chart shows a very clear inflection point, very close to the peak of Pokemania back in late 2020, early 2021, where those actually flip-flop positions and Japanese cards are now yielding higher prices on an individual basis than English. And I find that fascinating. On the one hand, English cards are generally more popular and have a much broader collector base across the globe, and generally worse condition even right out of the printer. But on the other hand, English cards are much more generic, much more common, and mass produced. You don't have the same level of exclusivity that you do with a lot of Japanese cards. 
There are so many different Japanese promos that are highly desirable and command a high price because they have the fundamentals. They have rarity to them, there's scarcity to them, they're just much more difficult to attain than their English counterparts. So in some ways, this makes a lot of sense. Now, one potential explanation or speculation for this inversion could be that a significantly greater number of low value English cards are being produced and sold, and as a result, lowering the average sale price per item as seen on this graph. However, a counterpoint to that is that the chart also shows that Japanese sales volume is also increasing. Japanese cards are selling more cards and at higher prices comparatively to English. And I find that fascinating. In fact, it shows that 1.79% increase in sales volume for Japanese has occurred in the last 90 days when compared to the last three year average. Again, it's a fascinating thing. And I think it suggests an awareness and perhaps a return to the market fundamentals. There's no doubt that we've seen some dramatic price swings, particularly in English, that seem to be correcting more aggressively, and that's probably a good thing. We've seen some very irrational prices throughout 2020 and 2021, with cards that really didn't have the fundamentals to support those prices. We're talking cards that are mass produced, that are readily available, that have poor condition, now coming back to reality. The market's repricing these items based on the fundamentals, and that's generally how markets work in these type of cycles. I know I've addressed this a multitude of times on the channel, but to me, the fundamentals are everything when it comes to collecting or investing. And those five fundamentals include rarity, scarcity, condition, the history behind the card, as well as its overall popularity. And together, those form to determine the actual value behind any given item. I think that's what we're going to see in the consolidation phase whenever it happens to occur is that prices will reset and be rational once more based on those fundamentals. Anyway, who knows, perhaps that consolidation phase is closer than anybody realizes. There does seem to be some early indications from the data that perhaps that rate of change is stabilizing out. Maybe we're reaching a sense of equilibrium once more with the market. I don't know what you guys think, but I'm looking forward the market becoming rational once more and perhaps having some of that slow steady healthy growth in the hobby once more rather than the explosive swings upward and downward either way it's going to be interesting to watch anyway guys i'm pokemon classics reminding you that the classics never go out of style let me know what you guys think of the market here down in the comments below and until next time stay well have fun and don't forget to enjoy collecting that's what it's all about we'll see you everybody Hey guys, I just wanted to say a quick thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. If you have any interest in becoming a patron yourself, check out the link to my Patreon below. And for more market analysis videos, you can click on one of these two. They're pretty good, at least I think so. Anyway, you should go check them out. I dare you. I don't really know what else to say, so I'll just disappear now. Bye bye